Hey everybody, my name is Ted Forbes and welcome back to another episode of The Art of Photography. And today we're going to loop back around and get back into some of the photo lit stuff that we've been working on the last couple months. Uh, we took a sidetrack and talked about TLR cameras for a while and I'm going to kind of go back and forth between some equipment based stuff and some photo history. And today I want to talk about a photographer, a French gentleman who I absolutely adore the work of. Um, a gentleman by the name of Raymond Depardon. And just to give credit where credit is due, I did receive him as a suggestion via email from Nicholas. Nicholas Bornstein and Nicholas had suggested a couple different guys that maybe we should cover on the show and Raymond Stuck is out as somebody that I think he's in that category of um, you know an amazing photographer who doesn't really get the recognition and the credit that he deserves and so I thought this would be a great opportunity today to talk about this. Uh, Raymond Depardon was one of the great Magnum photographers and we have never really discussed Magnum uh, photos on the show either and we'll talk about that in a second. It's a wonderful and extremely historically important photo co-op um, that started in the late 40s and I want to talk a little bit about that and look at some of Raymond's work as well. Um, just to give you a little bit of biographical information, Raymond started um, at a pretty young age when he was a kid uh, shooting medium format 6x6 photos. He grew up in a rural environment. At the age of 19 he moved to Paris to work as a photo assistant and this is a guy who really wanted to do photography. Um, I believe he took a job at Dalmas um, in the 60s and started out just reporting local sports coverage, local news, that kind of thing and eventually moved into doing foreign types of assignments and mainly covering the war in Algeria that was going on. Uh, in the late 60s he started his own photo studio called Gamma and that was kind of short-lived because he went on and became one of the Magnum photographers. And Magnum is a pretty impressive and serious school of photographers and I want to talk about all this stuff but I think the best thing to do is to move over and let's look at some images. So let's go check out the work of Raymond Depardon. So we're going to be talking about the wonderful, um, absolutely fabulous French photographer Raymond Depardon today. Before I talk too much about Depardon, I do want to mention um, Magnum Photos. And the reason, well, for a number of reasons, Raymond was a Magnum member, still is. Um, and Magnum, I never have really talked about on the show before. And there's... You know, it's just been kind of an oversight on my behalf. We haven't gotten to it yet. And most of you who are into photojournalism know exactly who Magnum um, is. And if you don't, Magnum is a photo cooperative that was founded in 1947 by a handful of very well-known photographers, among them being Robert Capa and Henri Cartier-Bresson. The interesting thing about Magnum is being a business, it is owned by its members. So it's owned by the photographers and run by the photographers. And their job is they provide photojournalism assignments, uh, licensing on previously photographed images, and just an extremely high quality of photojournalism that, you know, really is one of the most, I think, significant institutions of its type in the history of photography and it's been operating for over a century now and the way it works is they keep the level of talent and the quality of the work very high to be a new member there's kind of a complicated inaugural system where you have several stages of membership where you know you start with kind of no strings attached shooting some photos um, after two years you can get voted in as an associate member where you have voting rights and some things and and two years afterwards you can submit another portfolio and be considered to be a full-time member so there haven't been a whole lot of members um, in Magnum, but the people who are there are, I mean, it's just, it's mind blowing. If you click on photographers at the top here, and you know, again, a lot of you are probably familiar with Magnum, but if you're not, um, you're going to recognize a lot of these names as being fairly big names in photojournalism. People like Steve McCurry or Martin Parr, uh, Eugene Smith, Elliot Erwitt, uh, you know, there's been some big names over the years, Bruce Davidson. Um, there's also some names you probably are not familiar with in here, and I I would urge you if you have never visited Magnum's website to go look at some of this work, particularly the people you may not be familiar with, because it there. I mean, it will blow your mind the level of quality that Magnum have consistently produced over the years. And like I said, they are really one of the most historically significant institutions of their kind. Now. Raymond Depardon is a member of Magnum, which is why I decided to go ahead and talk about this just briefly. Um, and you can see Raymond's work in here as well. His, his link below. Um, but today what we're going to do, because I did some research beyond this website, um, I'm going to use Pinterest once again. And if you guys are new to the show, I use Pinterest for all this stuff. And so if you go to Pinterest 
dot com slash Ted Forbes is my account here. And Pinterest is organized into boards. And if you follow me on Pinterest, you can oftentimes see what I'm working on before I actually do the show, because obviously I research it before I film it. Pinterest is a way of bookmarking images online, and it is one of my favorite things. I use it constantly, and it's just such a great way. You know, bookmarking things and bookmarking them as images um, really makes this take off and makes a lot of sense for me. But anyway, I use this because it's great to present on for the show. Scroll all the way to the bottom. You'll see my board for Raymond Depardon, and we will go through some of these images. Now, flipping over to talk about Raymond, um, you know, what we're looking at here is somebody who essentially made his career and his style out of being a photojournalist. Um, personally, I think some, these are some of the most beautiful images um, in photojournalism. He's one of my favorites. And there's some really wonderful stuff in here. And what I think defines Raymond, this is going to be largely my opinion, but when you're a photojournalist, and this is an opinion, this is what photojournalists do, photojournalists are, they essentially are, their job is to capture photographs of events, times, places, cultures, um, and they are kind of, you know, charged with telling a story. And, you know, for instance, I remember being a kid and when I used to, you know, my parents had subscriptions to Time Magazine and National Geographic, and I remember seeing these things. And what you're seeing through photographs, and this is why it's so important, is you're seeing places in the world and things that you know, are so different than the culture that I grew up in. And it was like this window to this other world in some ways. And I think that's what makes it so important. And the people who do this best are the ones that can bring a wonderful artistic and compositional sense in mixing it with the storytelling. And the result is just something that's, you know, it's it's sublime on many levels. And it's just, it's amazing is what it is. You know, I'm using a lot of colorful adjectives, I know. But anyway, I want to start with this piece because this isn't necessarily, uh, it just doesn't scream photojournalism off, you know, first look here. But I love this image and it's one of my favorite Dependent images. And what you're seeing here, and I'll explain why, obviously it's a portrait of a woman, her head's turned the other way and she's putting in an earring. It's not a portrait where you see her face, it's simply telling a story. But what I think is important about this image is you can start to see influences here of photographers that came before Depardon. And this is why I think uh, successful artists really work because they, they fall into their culture and their time with a respect for the history of photography that's come before them and they create a logical extension to where that needs to go next and I think Depardon does that very well you can see Stieglitz in this image you can probably see influences of Steichen and, and you know a lot of these early guys um, that you know it's it, it's just a, a slice of time but a beautiful image um, you don't see the woman's face but she's got this really really interesting hairdo and, and it, it, there's a there's a, a timed quality to it um, you can it, it looks like it's of an era but at the same time there's a timelessness to it. And that's a theme that's going to come back a lot in Depardon's work. Um, another one of my favorite images is this one of these camels walking across the desert. And again, you're seeing, you know, minimalism infused in here into telling a story. At first glance, this looks like kind of a gray landscape with a black line running through the middle and looks very minimalist, very, you know, maybe like contemporary art, maybe a painting, something like that. And then obviously, as you begin to look at the image, you realize that indeed that line uh, draws your eye in and you realize there's something underneath, which is these guys leading these camels across the desert. And it works so well. Um, I, you know, I don't want to analyze it much more than that. I mean, but it, it's just, you know, to what a great compositional technique to kind of bring your eye in. It's something that forces you to look a little closer and realize it's something else. And it's pretty amazing and very strong. You see a lot of this minimal, sparse, horizontal or horizon line composition right down the middle a lot in his work. This is another great image of this uh, car that appears to be broken down in a field and the trunk and the hood are both open. Um, you know, and it's there are some interesting things about the image in terms of tones, and there's a little bit of mist, it appears in the background and the foreground, slightly out of focus, really drawing your eye in. But it's such an amazing image. Again, it's a timeless composition in a lot of ways. Um, you know, it tends to transcend that, even though the style of the car does indicate that it is from a time period. Um, and I just, you know, I, this is one of the things that Raymond does so well. Um, again, um, similar compositional structure, um, probably introducing things like rule of odds or rule of thirds even. But at the same time, though, I don't think that as a photojournalist, he's thinking of creating compositions as such. 
they probably come second nature. It's probably something he studied, but they work that way. You know, you have the three cyclists, you have the Jeep that's off to the left side of the screen, but your eye is drawn into this woman on the bicycle in the middle. This was taken in 1972 in Saigon. And, you know, fairly conventional photo technique of following the cyclist with the camera, either out, probably out a taxi window or something of that nature, where the background blurs out and you end up with a very sharp focus on the subjects. Uh, tells a story and is absolutely fabulous. Uh, this image is one of Depardon's most famous images. It's from probably one you guys have seen before. And, you know, obviously this guy's got his head in his coat and it looks like a headless figure sitting at a table. Um, wonderful composition, um, certainly leads a lot of questions as to <laughs> the appearance of this individual and, you know, where his head's gone and why it's in his jacket. And maybe it suggests he's headless. I don't know. There is a series of images, and I'll go through some of these now, that Depardon was commissioned to do. Um, and they were of an asylum in Italy. And these are some of the most striking images, I think, um, in a series that tell a story. Um, this is a gentleman that's in a cage. Uh, this was obviously a mental institution here. And the way his hair is poking up through the top, the cage is constrictive. These images have a, a feel to them that's awfully claustrophobic in nature. This one very blatantly so. Here's another one that's in a hallway. Uh, this yearning or this this wanting to get out and at the same time this heavy emotional message that you get to um, just in the way the figure is speaking the one draped over the radiator or this this figure in the back that's blurred out the, there's a real sense of mystery um, some beautiful work and obviously you know a subject that is you know um, I don't want to say controversial but but a little bit difficult to look at sometimes um, We'll pull back to some more less disturbing images, but uh, I love this woman in this car. These are a couple that I just chose. And this being one of my favorites, and again, when you see this dichotomy in here of, of a timeless quality, but at the same time being a little bit dated and of an era, you know, there's things in here like the, you know, the typography on the fuel pump, uh, the design of the fuel pump, the fact she's in a Volkswagen Beetle, um, the stickers in the window. There, there are objects in this image that do suggest a certain time period. But what's important about this image is the way that this woman in the car draws your eye in. And... I think that has something to do with the fact that at the same time, it also feels a bit timeless, like this could be anybody of any era. She just happens to be in this one. And, you know, again, drawing your eye in. And that's one thing that, that I think Depardons did so well um, with his subject matter was, you know, visually placing things in a way that give you something to look at without being cluttered or distracting or, you know, something of that nature. If you look at like this image, for instance, of, uh, uh, you know, this individual with their foot on a table and, you know, where's the focus of this image? Well, it's not the glass in her hand. That's blurry. It could be the leg, and it's also probably the bottle. Um, just interesting compositional features like that that, that, that make De Proudhon so interesting. Um, this is another great image. This is Northern Chad from 1976, and you have these these people that are walking off to this, this camp. And, again, the way, I mean, there are many ways this could have been photographed, but at this distance, um, with the figures where they are, you don't lose them if they were to have gone close closer to these structures, you might not have recognized them as much. But anyway, this wonderful eye composition and a lot of this, too, you could probably argue is decisive moment and being able to take the right image at the right time to get the right feel. Uh, another one, this is from Lebanon from late 70s have this you know guy with the gun and the vest and it's just decisive moment this image could not have happened at any other point and it makes sense right where it is and it's what makes it so strong and i think it's just simply amazing um another one that's great and this is uh, from a french presidential campaign from 1988 so this is a little bit later image but again you still see the relationship and the style the the, the format of medium format film um and obviously this dialogue that you have between the two figures which is the presidential candidate on the television and the baby in the the chair that are looking at each other that seem to be having this dialogue. Uh, very decisive moment, I think, in a lot of ways and just beautiful. Um, another image I want to look at, uh, this is another one from Chad in the late 70s um, with a, I assume, a student writing on a chalkboard. And uh, it's, there's, there's, it, it's just a strong image, all the textures that are going on, the typography of the handwriting and this individual that is, you know, seems Seems to be dwarfed by the chalkboard below. Um, it, it's just really neat. The last thing I want to look at with Depardon is his sense of color. He didn't just shoot black and white all the time. And a lot of these color images, and these were taken from a series that he did in Glasgow from the 1980s. Um, I'd 
tried to research um, the significance of this Glasgow series um, to see what exactly the assignment was. This was commissioned by the Sunday Times, and these photos were never released, as far as I know, until more recently, and this was done in 1980. And they really tell an interesting story, and what you're going to see a lot in these, and I wish I could have found more information on them, and if somebody does have more info, you know, please contact me or leave a comment or something to share. You're going to see kind of dichotomy and contrast on different levels and so you know one thing you see is this use of color and the way the color contrasts and we'll talk about these as we go through the images and also subject matter because what we see here is you know uh, you see this view of glasgow with this smokestack in the you know, not quite the foreground but it's definitely prominent in the picture up on the upper uh, right hand side of the image and this little girl pushing her assumed brother in a stroller in the bottom so it's kind of this weird sense of children uh, juxtaposed with industry and it's it's very strong these images speak very loudly um, this is another one i love of this very gray um you know apartment assumed type living situation here with the chimneys and and there's no grass in the image it's it's got a cold um you know kind of dark feel to it but then you have this young girl in a pink dress who's in the foreground the paint completely jumps out from from the large amount of gray that you see in the image and also the subject matter you know with the kind of the innocence of youth juxtaposed with the you know <laughs> i suppose the tragedy of growing up and dealing with industry um, another great one too with this kid who appears to be somewhat upset in this image and this gentleman coming around the corner um, this composition and i don't have another one to compare it to but um, de Proudhon has um, a couple things that he'll do stylistic that you see over and over again in images and sometimes this juxtaposition of somebody standing around a corner is a theme that comes up in his work but it's very strong and it does tell um, quite a bit of a story the last two images i'll show um, were two images also from this series in glasgow in the 80s and sorry this one's really big uh, but these kids blowing bubbles with pink bubble gum and the way this stands out also against you know these kind of gray urban backdrops um, just a really wonderful sense of color and you know i've also uh, you know concur that that i think with a lot of his color images and what makes uh, Raymond's work so interesting with color is, is that all of a sudden you have this sense of color sort of making the image. If these images were black and white, they'd still be interesting, but the effect is gone. You know what I mean? If you, if you saw these without the, the pink bubbles, I think they would be very different images. Um, and they're really kind of, you know, that color is what makes them. So anyway, this is just a little bit of the, you know, retrospective of the work of Depardon. I think he's an absolutely fabulous photographer. As I said, he's still alive today. Um, and go check his work out. Go look at the Pinterest board, Google further and do your own research and, uh, you know, find out what makes, uh, makes him one of, I think, you know, the great photojournalists of our time. And probably I would, say a little bit unrecognized. So that is the work of Raymond Depardon, and I hope this is an interesting episode for you guys because one of the things I like doing with this show, particularly with these photo lit episodes that we do, is that I like to try to pick people who may be a little less known. Now we've obviously covered some big names on here because it's all important, um, but what I think really is cool about doing these is when I can expose people to photographers they may not have heard of or people that are maybe slightly more obscure that do incredible work. And you know, a, a friend of mine years ago called this the deserving many you know if you consider all the photographers in the world and some of whom do incredible work that you may not be familiar with and I think this is a really important thing to cover on the show and we'll be doing more of this in the next coming weeks and as promised we kind of took a break from this and we did a lot of episodes with TLRs um, twin lens reflex cameras and one of the things I want to get back to and I've been talking a lot about this lately is in the next couple weeks I'm actually going to do a shootout and we'll compare uh, shooting the same image with different cameras kind of how these compare to each other uh, and what kinds of looks you can get out of these these wonderful cameras and so we'll loop back around to that a little bit one question i have for you guys and i'd appreciate if you guys would tweet email facebook leave a comment below whatever you want to do to communicate um, we don't cover a lot of digital photography on this show and i don't know if that's something that's of interest to people or not um, i think that's one thing that sets the show apart a little bit is that i do a lot more with photo history and talking about um, bigger names and, and people you should be aware of and you know if if digital stuff post-production is something you guys would like me to discuss, let me know. And we'll kind of see how it goes over the summer. I'm trying to introduce a lot of new programming and do some new things with the show that we haven't done before to, you know, uh, enlighten you guys and make, you, make it a little more accessible. Um, and we'll still do all the same old stuff. I'm just adding new stuff to it. And if you guys, as you know, we are doing 
three shows a week now. We've got Photo Friday Q&A shows. We've got the Photo Threes that we do during the week. And then on the weekends, we release these episodes as well that are a little bit longer, a little more in depth. And we're not as worried about a time limit. So anyway, let me know what you guys think. And uh, anyway, that's about it for now. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Uh, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, all that stuff. And uh, to stay up with the latest and greatest episodes that we provide here at The Art of Photography. Anyway, once again, guys, this has been The Art of Photography. My name's Ted. Peace out. I'll see you guys next time. Have a great week. Later.